Hey everyone, this is Dan Nissel, and instead of a gaming video, today we're actually looking at this. This box. We're going to do an unboxing of it. It is a 3D printer that I ordered offline about two and a half weeks ago. It's a do-it-yourself kit. You know, it's a pretty plain box. It's nothing special about it. So, I figured I'll go ahead and open it up on camera. I don't know even how to get started, so let's just dig into it. There we go. I'm very excited for this. I mean, absolutely beyond words excited for this. So, this is just a bunch of cardboard that they've used to make a corner. I wish my knife was a lot sharper. Well, first things first, this is a crushed box of 3D filament. This is PLA, if I can get it in the camera. So it's a little bit easier to print with than ABS, so I've been told. Just open it up. Yeah, it's just a sampler pack. It's about uh, 10 meters of each color. I mean, you have, what's that? It's like a, a bright pinkish orange, gray, blue, natural, like a tan or beige, white, gold, green. It's a bunch of sample colors. It's, you know, nothing special. Not too much there. But, hey. I figured this would be a cool unboxing to do and uh, kind of make a, a follow-up video, you know, with my progress of actually putting it together. That cannot sound good on camera. And quite frankly, if the voice over doesn't do well, because I don't quite know how well this microphone actually is, I'll probably just do an after shoot voiceover. Really packaged this up well. There we go, going floor. Don't care. I mean, pretty generic box. We got the old fragile. Got some Chinese characters on the box. If I can get it in the camera right there. It, I mean, it's heavy. It's considerably a lot heavier than I thought. It's about 10 kilograms, so roughly 20 pounds, somewhere around there. So, just set this right down. All right, so let me get this PLA off the table. Uh, let's see. What's going to be the best way? Not like that. All right. Well, let's handle it like this. Let's see how this does. Aha! Uh -huh. There we go. We have a shrink wrapped thing. Ah, there's a. Don't know what that is. Don't care. Slice it open. Let me, I'll flip it back over to the other orientation. It's probably going to be wrong even though it's the right way up. This is just clean wrap. Oh, lovely. Styrofoam all over the table and floor.
they had this packed pretty well. Alrighty. Oh man, so they give you a screwdriver. Look at that. Look how not straight that is at all. At all. But hey, I guess if people don't have, you know, Phillips screwdrivers, it's cool. There's the, uh, I guess you could call it like conduit cable wrap to, you know, neatly organize your cables. Zip ties, things of the sort. A box, a box, a bag. A pretty heavy bag of washers, nuts, screws. I mean, everything. Let me let me get this up to the camera. I mean, I sure hope the instructions are are well put together. Oh wait, they won't be. <laughs> we'll figure it out. This, yep, this is the control board, tactile feed. This is the LCD screen. If I held it into the camera. This is the LCD screen. This is what you have your display and how you start everything and get it going. I'll, okay, yep, US plug. That's that's always nice. It, this comes with a 12 volt, I think. I think it's 24 amp. Not entirely sure. This is the hotbed, the build plate mounting bracket. It's got the plastic still, does it? Yeah, it has the plastic still on it, and it's a little jagged. They did not deburr that. This uses the ADNET V1.0 board. Kind, It looks like the printer board that you see in a lot of rep wraps, and it's a little bit more compact, and it's all in one, so it shows you the out you know, the layout of the board, but it's also printed on there in English, so that helps out a lot. It also has really nice uh, main Russian language on there, so that's, that's something. Here is the heated bed. This is one of the more important parts if you want to print PLA, definitely, but, or uh, ABS, I'm sorry. PLA is also benefited from this. They put the masking tape over it. It's it's already bubbled, peeling. I have some really nice seven inch wide blue painter's tape, which works a lot better than this yellow coming later. I believe it's coming Monday. I also have a build tack spatula, which is a pistol grip spatula. So I'm try to get this organized a little bit. I'll keep that there. Okay, so here we have the end stops and the various connectors and all that. These are for your X, Y, and Z axis. It's kind of hard to hear the click, but they're there. That's to tell the print head or the, uh, the board it's done. It's, hey, we actually got four hex head Allen wrench keys, a wrench, and another Phillips screwdriver. So that's cool. This is the heat sink and the fan for the hot end, for the feeder. Oh, extruder, yeah. Words, difficult. Yeah, that's, that's nice, it looks to be a 40 millimeter fan. I have others in case this one's cracked. This is the extruder jumper, most likely. It goes from the NEMA 17 stepper motor to the board, but don't quote me on that. These are wire cutters wire snips. They're not bad. Flush. They're actually flush cut, so I have a couple pairs of really nice expensive ones that probably do the exact same as these. But, hey, they're nice to have extra tools of anything. Next layer. We have, oh, I didn't have to buy one. It comes with a micro, US, or a micro SD USB adapter with an SD card in it. I believe it's four gigs. No, it's it's eight gigabytes. I don't know if you can see that. Focus. I don't know if that's focusing, but trust me, it's eight gigabytes. The thing is super chintzy. <laughs> Good thing I actually bought one because this one already fell apart. But I digress back to this. 
here we have what looks like a 50 millimeter blower that blows down through this decently 3d printed duct straight onto the hot end so it's gonna it's gonna mount you know just like so if you can see that and it's gonna blow and it's gonna cool down the the material as it comes out so it doesn't completely stay liquid and, and mess everything up this is the belt if I'm not mistaken your x-axis is belt driven your y-axis which is the bed over there is driven by a threaded rod while your z-axis is bleach screw here is a simple USB B to USB adapter I don't know what this is this is something important though something it seems to be nicely cut acrylic so we have our Z axis this is where the stepper motor that controls the Y axis is or I'm sorry the X axis and the lead screw goes through here while the straight threaded or uh, smooth rod goes through here and that's your guide eh, I've seen better printed quality it's it's pretty rough you can you can see a lot of um, a lot of different look like it had some Z issues on this one but hey I can print more there's tons and tons of Thingiverse files for this printer alone not to mention me designing my own but hey it's still something to get started these are miscellaneous acrylic parts for to put it together we have a lot of tiny little pieces looks like that's possibly a belt grip right here this little piece in between my thumbs looks like that might be how you lock down I don't really have to pull all this out. These are the other pieces. These are the, the actual sides. It's it's a decent sized printer. It really is. Now here's the the main beauty. If I can get it out. The box got a little crushed. It looked like it might have got dropped. You can kind of see on that corner. It's, it's a little broken with the pieces coming out, which is not good. That's where that piece is from. We're going to set those off to the side. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and these tiny little pieces out. I'm assuming they have use. We're going to save those. But, back to this. This is the board. It's hard to see in this, the antistatic bag, but it has an SD card reader and the USB plus everything else. These heat sinks on the MOSFETs are going to go. They're not on there straight and they're small and I'm going to upgrade that because I have plans and already have a box designed for this and it's going to be an enclosure it goes on the back and then you have it on the front and you actually have a fan to pull the heat off of this because this gets very warm so yeah i'm going to upgrade to probably 10 millimeter um heat sinks just because yeah next layer okay now this is where the fun stuff starts happening more crushed we have more of that acrylic here we have the threaded rods with the lead screws. It's going to be kind of hard to see. Actually, you know what? I'll go ahead. I will cut this open. Just enough so you can see it. Threaded rod right here. Lead screw right here. Threaded rod obviously has a lot, you know, sharper and more compact threads while the lead screw is a little bit more fluid. And a lot of rep wraps use threaded screws and use nuts in this instead of the uh, the brass guide right there and it will get bound up a lot. So that's really nice. To actually have a cheaper kit such as this, you know, an entry level kit is what I would call it, to have lead screws. While they're not that expensive, they're still a nice addition and do cost a little bit more than cutting corners. So here we have, already have the belt part on the stepper motor. These are just NEMA 17, tiny little stepper motors. Four wire, eh, simple Molex connector, easy enough. We have four of those, obviously. These are the caps, end caps for the uh, smooth rods, I believe. Here we have more 
tiny little pieces. I'm thinking that those pieces actually aren't anything because if you're looking at this, make a little demonstration. These holes right here where the screws go through, I'm pretty sure, yeah, they fit in there. So they're nothing. But, whatever. This is the hot end. This is important. This is where the magic happens. I will take this out of the bag. I apologize for this video being a little bit longer than usual and not dealing with video games, but I'm excited for this and I'm sure you all will probably find some interest in this as well. Do do do. I've never done an unboxing of anything, so it's it's exciting. This this is the hot end. It could be tightened, which it needs to be tightened. But this is the Kapton tape holding on the thermocoupler, and there's that's a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So it's actually not a bad. This is this is a direct feed system, meaning the filament goes in the top of this little hole, gets gripped by this wheel between that bearing, fed straight down not the best it's heavy i'm probably upgrading to a bowden feed with an e3d hot end later this will be the 12 volt power supply this is not the best this is a cheap power supply where most of them are oh yeah you can already smell the burnt electronics it's not a bad one it's very snug in this box it is what it is. It does what it's supposed to. It actually has a little potentiometer over here, or a variac, whatever you want to call it, that you can adjust the voltage. I think this one goes up to 15, if I hold it in the camera, about 15.34 volts. So, uh, does it actually say how many watts this is? 250 watts. So yeah, 20 amp. I will be upgrading to a 30 amp very shortly and I'm also going to be designing a cover like a lot of people have for these that affixes over this that you actually use these screws right here and you have an on off switch as that's fused as well as your plug typical 3D uh, 3 uh, plug like you would have on a computer power supply I'll slide this back in this box I might slide this back in this box Is that all? I believe that's all. Yeah, that's all. So, as you see, there's everything. I haven't laid it out on the table because I wanted to make this video kind of as short as I could. There's the unboxing. I will have an update soon of me actually putting it together, whether it's at different intervals. I might do a time lapse. Probably not. My camera did not arrive that I actually am getting for this. I bought a cheap knockoff GoPro called the Ekin H9 that shoots 4K video at 25 FPS and 1080 at 60. But for $50, it looks absolutely stunning. So keep this short. Thank you for stopping by. Hopefully this is something that interests you and stay tuned because I will have another video of this getting put together there are tutorials and instructions online and from what I've also heard this little USB with the flash drive actually has videos and PDF files on it so we'll see so next time we'll have part of a printer here thank you for stopping by I hope you have a great day evening afternoon morning whatever it is wherever you are trust me I'm gonna be I'm just super excited I'll see you next time.